Hello everybody, this is Simple Man. I'm hoping you're having a blessed day today and being a blessing to others. Sharing the gospel message, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, is gospel is good news. Let's go right into this topic here, the golden calf of the evangelicals. Is he or is he not a golden calf? Think of it. I mean, they put him in the pulpits. They're preaching to vote for him. Uh... You can look at all the videos out there of all these congregations, all these preachers. I mean, he's a golden calf. Is he or is he not? You tell me. Let's look at uh, his first four years. I voted for him the first year. Okay, the second t term, I didn't vote for him. I couldn't vote for Joe, President Joe Biden. He is the president. And this time... I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm not voting for this fellow, okay? But the message is intertangled because evangelicals tangled him into the churches. And if if you look at the uh, Church of Laodicea, yeah, you know, Jesus is knocking at the door, okay? Anybody opens the door, he will come in. Now, I think that's what's going on here. They placed him on the pulpit and now our Lord and Savior. You're, you're hearing more messages about him and all these tents and everything else. I mean, it's ridiculous. We should be having our, you know, a revival to bring people into the faith, teaching the Word of God. Um, politics, yeah, you know, you vote for the best person for the job. But, here we go. You know, his first, this economic club here in New York. You know, you can, you can watch it. I'm not playing it, so this is not about to play it. But, um, you know, I'm thinking, what do you do for everybody in four years? Okay, he created... Tax cuts for the rich. Did he not? Do those tax cuts not exist still for everybody now? Yes, they do. So when he's condemning President Joe Biden about losing jobs, it's the companies that get the tax write-offs, tax cuts, playing games, or they don't know how to run their business. True or false? You tell me. Now, the middle class tax cuts, what happened to them? We don't have them. We don't have any tax cuts. Okay? He didn't do much for us at all, did he? Did the jobs flourish with him? No. We had COVID. Basically, everything was shut down. It was a disaster. He was at the helm, was he not? You know, call it like you see it. You know, the job started coming back after everybody was able to get back to work. And businesses started to flourish. Also, businesses realized that they don't need all this product, stock, and everything else. So, they they do more with less people. It's just the way it is. The stockholders want their 6% or whatever. And the companies, the way they do it is they make the people work harder for less. If you don't think that is, you better talk to the real people out there doing the work like myself, okay? I lost a lot of write-offs. You know, when, when he did this tax code change and it eliminated, you know, the breaks I got that he gave. So I have no breaks at all. It's just... You know, they wanted to take away the interest for people buying homes and paying the interest. You know, being able to write that off. That's basically the only thing we have anymore, and they want to take that. So, you know, with these greedy, hungry people, you know, he is all by himself. Is he going to help anybody? Both candidates are pro-choice, Okay. He's always been pro-choice. He bought into lying to the evangelicals to get their votes, get the people in the pulpits to vote for him. He was always a Democrat before. I mean, go in history, go back into his 
family history. He is who he is. His grandfather was a thug. His father was a thug. He's a thug. He hasn't changed any. I mean, who puts their own face plaster on the wall and it's all about him? He's a golden calf. They put him on that pedestal. And Jesus is knocking at the door. We need to look at that situation and run from that daggone pulpit. Run from the church and what they're preaching out there. I mean, I'm not saying one way or the other on voting, okay? On my own personal, I can't vote for him. And I'm having a hard time trying to vote for a Democrat. But if it's him or her, I think I'm voting for her. But I'm having a hard time. They're both pro-choice. So if I'm putting that on the same field, you know, they both lose. You got to vote for somebody or somebody's going to be present. So who are you going to vote for? Somebody caused chaos January 6th because they didn't win and he can't accept being a loser, which he is. You know, he was a loser many times. You know, how many times did he go bankrupt? And he, and he, and he plays the game. He plays it on the people that lose out and he wins. Um, you know, not sure how far I tried this message and it keeps going down different rabbit holes. Um, you know, we have a situation that in this country, we're going to have a president. Either he is going to be or Harris is going to be. But one of them is going to be, you know. So we got to look at who's going to do the best for this country and, uh, you know, represent, you know, what we hold true uh, to keep this country stable and, uh, you know, help one another. He's helping himself. He's helping his top group get rich. He states it as such, and these people buy into his lies. You would have figured with all the praying over him and with his bullet, whether it hit his ear or not, he would have had a God moment. He would have had to change. He hasn't changed. He's the same old person he always was. It's about him. It's about his self-pride. It's about what he can get. Okay, and he's trying to buy everybody into believing his bull. He's a liar. He's a bully. He's a name caller. And his economic policy did not benefit 99% of the people in this country. And for those that are, you know, backing him, you know, I just think you're in delusion. I really do. You know, I really think you're in delusion. And I don't understand it. Uh, Harris, you know, I don't buy into the left wing, you know, mindset uh, of all that. But I, I think she's going to be more stable for the four years than this clown is going to be coming in here. You know, he acts like, you know, Putin wouldn't have invaded Ukraine. Are you kidding me with his watch? What did he do? He couldn't even serve. He thinks he thinks prisoner of war, people that get hurt in the military, are losers. You know, that's what he thinks. He won't even go, you know, to certain places. And then he did that, you know, photo op at the grave. Only for his benefit. Are you kidding me? Everything's about him. If it don't do something for him, he won't do it. Are you buying into the lie? Are you buying into what the evangelical majority of them do is put him as their going calf? I pray for you. I pray for this country. And I pray for the rapture next year. You'll be hearing more from me uh, on my own personal videos uh, about... Uh, the rapture study next year. This year, I'm uploading the book of John. But this basic video is a political video. And 
Yeah, I don't want to vote for Harris, but I can't have him as president. Okay? I can't have him as president. I wasn't going to vote. And, you know, the more I thought about it, the more I prayed about it, it's like, you can't like this thug. He's a liar. He used these people, okay? Whether it's a conspiracy theory, I find it very odd that a kid with no military training can get up on a damn shack and shoot him <laughs> with all these undercover uh, personnel the police, you heard the messages of what they let out. I think it's a joke. He should have had a God moment. If it was a true situation, he should have had a God moment. Would you? I know I would. Let me give you a for instance. Okay. I'm into motorcycles. I always have been. I don't have any now. I'm much older now. Probably want one. I drive one. But uh, I sold one, and, um, you know, I was building one way back in the day. And I spent all winter building it, and, um, you know, I was driving, ready to drive it to work. At the time, my state did not have a helmet uh, rule. So you didn't have to have a helmet to drive your bike. I jumped on my bike, kick-started it, revved it up. About ready to take off, put my sunglasses on, about ready to take off for work, and I heard the voice call my name and told me to put my helmet on. I turned the bike off, turned right around, walked in, got my helmet, and went down the road. As I was doing 50-some miles an hour down the highway, a car pulls in front of me, and he stops. I thought he seen me. I turned into the slow lane to go past him. And at that second before I was ready to go past him, he zips in front of me. I hit that front fender of the car. Full speed. Flew over top of that car. Landed on my helmet. My head slid across the pavement. And shook up. At that point in time, I had adrenaline. I jumped up, looked at my motorcycle that was all busted up. I was ready to have confrontation with the driver that hit me. It was an older gentleman, which probably is my age now. Got out of the car, teary-eyed. <laughs> which I'm getting teary-eyed thinking about it now. Comes over to me, and he says, I'm sorry. All I could do was spin around and sit on the pavement. Now, at that time, okay, at the gas station right there on the corner where I slid and smacked up against the, the curb, and I was sitting, they came running over, put a neck brace on my neck, and cut my pant leg because I had, and I didn't even know, didn't even feel it. I had blood gushing out of my leg. My whole pants leg, jeans, was filled with blood. Okay, they stopped the bleeding. And, uh, you know, before I went to the hospital, I had a guy that was there waiting for a bus. <laughs> he yells to me. You look like Evil Knievel flipping over that car like that. That was wild. That's what he said to me. And what I said to him was, can you be my witness on what happened? He said, sure. Well, he was and he jumped on the bus. It didn't matter. I went to the hospital, got taken care of. Okay. My bike was smashed. I spent all winter rebuilding it. New paint job. You know, it, it was nice. You know, the man was sorry. I wrote it off. Um, 20 years after the fact of that, I had neck fusion, three-level fusion with titanium plate in my neck now. That was 20 years, and it's been 20-some years since then. So I'm talking a few years ago. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you know, 
who was that? That was my heavenly father. And if you're a believer, that's your heavenly father. He called out my name, told me to get the helmet on. If I wouldn't have listened, I would have been dead. No doubt about it. It's kind of funny. I listened. He had everything set up in place for me. The paramedics were there for me. Okay, he knows the beginning to the end. He knew that situation. And it wasn't my time. I can't tell you why some people die and some people don't. I can't tell you that. I don't know if it's because I now am married with children and grandchildren. I can't tell you that. You know, I always ask, why me? <laughs> I had a God moment. Okay? All right? No, I didn't go to a pure person. I'm still a man in the flesh, has my faults. I'm a believer. He's my father, and I believe in him. I try to do better every day. But it's not by my work, salvation. It's by his work, what he did for me. I always believed him. And that's what I'm telling you. You got a God moment. Something's going to shift you to know who did it, okay? You're not going to act like the same person you were before. You're going to grow into something different, especially when you're at that level that you're going to be president of the United States of America. Do we want a thug, a name-calling bully because we're greedy, because he's going to be our golden calf? for our own profit or he's going to change this country and prove this country for all. Do you see him doing that? <laughs> I don't. So I can't vote for him. I'll probably vote for Harris. What say you? I ask you to add to this video comments. Okay? I know that many do not comment because I get it. But I do see a lot of people listening. And I pray for that my videos have something to say and help those. This is not a religious, although it's tied in because the evangelicals tied it in to their part. And I guess it's all intertwined now. We got a choice between him and her. They both have pro-choice. They both think that way. We need a president. Who are you going to let God this country? This low-class thug that's a criminal or a prosecutor that prosecutes people like him? Do you want him to just keep getting away with, well, murder? Somebody got killed. You know, no, he didn't do it directly, but he revved up the crowd and she got it. Okay, so... You know, you got to take responsibility. If you rev up a crowd, are you not responsible? You can't go into a movie theater, it's said over and over again, and yell out fire and cause a chaos, can you? Well, you know, take it for what it's worth. I can't vote for this man. I guess I got to humble myself and accept the better of the worse, okay? So you know where I stand. I wish I didn't have to make this choice. But tell me. Change my mind if I'm wrong. God bless every one of you. I hope you come out of your delusion if you believe he's your going calf. Jesus Christ is mine. And he's only mine. And I look forward to the rapture or taking my last breath and thanking him for all, I did, all he did for me. God bless you, and I hope you have a great and fantastic day. Bye.